This will be lecture 2 of unit 6, the last lecture of unit 6. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about few more important topics from plant physiology. Most of the plant physiology topics are already covered in lecture 1. So in this lecture, we are mostly going to talk about the plant hormones, basics of plant hormones what are the types of the plant hormones, their nature and some examples. We'll also talk about some five important plant hormones in details including auxin, auxin transport and signaling and function, zibralin, abscisic acid, ethylene, cytokinin and then we are also going to talk about some other plant secondary metabolites who does not have a direct role in plant growth. So we'll also see the difference between plant hormones and plant secondary metabolites. We'll be talking about different classes of plant secondary metabolites, their function with proper example. The numbers written after every single subtopic denotes the number of questions approximately you're going to get from those subtopics in CSINET exam. Now how to remember the different five hormones and their roles and functions. Uh, so for, for easy remembering, I have listed this picture. This will help you to understand. Because if you look at this picture, we are listing the life cycle of plants starting from the germination of the seeds, then growth of the plant till maturity, flowering of the plant, then flowering converted to, after the fertilization into fruit development, and then abscission and death of the plant, and then producing seed. So this is a cycle and then again the cycle continues to repeat. Now in this cycle, what we can see is that uh, the, the position and important functions of the hormones are sequential. It's not like just a single hormone is doing its job at a time. So there is a time stretch for every single hormone to work. Just like the time stretch of the hormones working in our human body during puberty and during menopause are totally different. The same situation here. So it starts with gibberellin. Gibberellin is initiator hormone which helps in the germination of the seed. It is also effective during the growth maturity phase, through the flowering phase and also halfway through the fruit development phase. You can see the yellow shaded regions are the functions of gibberellin. Then auxin's role is beginning from the growth and maturity phase. It actually is a primary hormone for their plant growth. So growth and maturity, flowering and halfway through fruit development. Then cytokinins also help the cells to grow and divide. So it will also begin uh, from the growth and maturity phase. So both auxin and cytokinin work side by side together through the growth and maturity phase, through the flowering phase. Because auxin helps the growth of the epical buds and tissues where cytokinin helps them uh, to build the root tissues and also for all the body cells to divide and grow. So the cytokinins work till the end of the fruit development. And then ethylene begins its activity from the midway through flowering and continues till abscission. So ethylene has an important role to play like fruit ripening. That's why maximum part of the fruit development is covered by ethylene as well as cytokinins together. And at the end we have abscisic acid. The action begins from abscission and continues till seed dormancy. So abscisic acid's role is once all the job is done, once the fruit uh, is produced after, after the plant is established, it's its role as a as an organism, uh, it, it, it replicate. I mean, it involves in the process of fertilization. Then it's time for the plants to go under aging. So abscission is done, and then seed dormancy, which is also caused by abscisic acid. So this, all these things together, uh, are the sequential events from zibarelin till abscisic acid. Okay. Now auxin. Let's begin with individual of these hormones and we are going to talk about the details of these individual hormones. Okay. So first of all auxin. The most important hormones in terms of CSINR is the spine. There are also many other hormones available in the plant body. They function together. But these are the five major growth regulators. And I am discussing about these hormones. Let me also tell you one fact. That these hormones are known as the the primary growth regulators of plants. That means it helps the plants to grow. And not only just the cells to grow and divide, but also the overall plants to grow means uh, growth and maturity, flowering, fruit ripening, all these things are taken care of by the hormones. But there is a big question and that question is, uh, apart from these hormones, there are also 
other uh, chemical compounds that are produced by the plants which are not directly involved in the plant growth. So those components are, uh, are derived from these primary metabolites. We call them secondary metabolites. Their job is not directly helping the plants to grow, but their job is generally involved in, in helping the plants to survive the stressful conditions, uh, to prevent uh, against the hard loads, and also uh, help them to mate. That means help them to initiate the fertilization by adding colors to the flower and stuff. So those are the job of secondary metabolites. But this hormones has concrete roles to play and those are uh, quite easily observable. So let's look at the first hormone, oxine. Oxine and cytokinin, both the hormones are involved in the plant's growth. Remember? So when I say oxine, the oxine is always involved in promoting the cell growth of the plant. It is involved in a gravitropism and phototropism. You know, phototropism is the idea of the plant tissue to grow, grow towards light only. That's why you see it bent forming uh, in the plant's stem because it always wants to go towards the sunlight. And uh, there is also gravitropism. Gravitropism is the idea where the stem of the plant will always go against the gravity, while the root will always go towards the gravity. Now the question is why plant can establish such a such a function? You know, how can plants stem and structures attain that kind of bending? The reason they can attain that kind of bending is that if we look at this, this is the stem, this is the stem of, of the plant, and an actual apical bud, it's growing. This tissue will start dividing because oxygen starts secreting. The most important feature is that oxygen uh, always move away from light. So synthesis of oxygen is done by the apical bud. Now once oxygen is synthesized, oxygen flow will always be against the sunlight. So uh, it will always go away from light. So oxygen start to rush into the darker side of the stem uh, tissue. Okay. So let's say this is the source of light as you can see in this picture. So oxygen is flowing to the other side. Oxygen is flowing to the dark. This is the darker side. This is the lighter side. So oxygen is flowing to the darker side. And as oxygen is flowing towards the darker side, then higher concentration of oxygen in this darker side causes this part of the cells to divide faster and rapidly. And this fast division here uh, causes the tissue to enhance in size. While there are very less oxygen in the light side, so as there is very less oxygen, the division of the cell is not that fast. So you know, this side of the cell is dividing less, this side of the cell is dividing more. So if you have more division in this side, less division in this side, you will see a bend. Uh, and that's how the bend is created towards light because oxygen is going away uh, from light. Now, how exactly this oxygen hormone is produced? What is the biosynthesis pathway of oxygen hormone? The biosynthesis pathway of oxygen is involved with indole 3 pyruvate acid pathway. 